Hello and welcome to In the Art Scene podcast, an art podcast that has it all. I'm your host, Galena Marquez, and I invite fascinating people to talk about their personal creative journeys, success stories, and inspiration. We talk about art business and marketing, how to find your creative voice, and all the new trends in the art world, like NFT, AI, and such. Join me and my guest for today's conversation. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to In the Art Scene. And I have another amazing San Diego artist. Oh, my God. San Diego is just endless for for artists and creatives. And I think I, I will I will spend the rest of my life meeting artists over here. <laughs> it's amazing. Anyway, so I uh, I am having Anne Galombek with me in the studio today. She is an amazing, colorful, whimsical, uh, abstract artist. Uh, she is the founder of uh, Studio 5 uh, here in San Diego. Uh, she is a representative for uh, several artists with the Left Bank, which you might remember uh, Wendy uh, on our podcast, we were talking about uh, licensing your work with Left Bank. So I hope that Anne will share some inside information with us today. So we have so many things to talk about. Okay, let's start. And please introduce yourself. Um, I'm Anne Golumbuck, and I am from San Diego. I'm an abstract artist. I've been painting only about 12 years. Um, I just kind of fell into the arts. It found me. So uh, it's been an amazing, amazing ride for the last 12 years. Well, I know that. Uh, so you moved to California from Oklahoma. Yes. Right? And uh, you were not an artist at that time. No, I was actually in the fitness world. I was a personal trainer, life coach. I taught at the gym and um in 2009, I was struck by a car by a drunk driver. Oh, my and, goodness. Um, I had just finished remodeling my house. I had no art on my walls, but I had to lay on the floor for about a year oh. every day to straighten out my spine because it was so twisted. Um and I had no art. I had no color. I had nothing. I had one. I think I had a couch and a chair in my house and I was going crazy. And I thought, OK, if I were to paint art, what would I do? How would I do it? What colors would I use? And I would I guess I must have imagined what I would do. And I kept thinking, I'm not strong enough to paint a painting, but I would be able to throw paint on a painting. Or I've kept thinking maybe I'd fill water balloons and throw it. And then I thought, no, because I'm not strong enough to throw a water balloon, but I could put water balloons on and pop them onto a oh canvas. My God. I had I had this dream about popping a water balloons, you know, with darts and stuff. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. So awesome. I have something for you that somebody found for me. And it's actually a sealable water balloon that <gasps> seals itself up. So when it hits the canvas, it pops open. Oh, God. I'll have to send you a video when I do that. Yes, one. So, please do. Please. Yeah. Do. So after that year, um, I decided to buy some canvases and I had a friend call me and said, I'm taking this art class. Do you want to come? I'm like, that is crazy. I just bought canvas. So that's how I got started. And they started selling my first art show in 2011. I, um, I sold 11 paintings and wow. I, I am hooked. Wow. <laughs> so that, that's how I started. That's significant. And it's, it's quite a, you know, it's quite a short leap to, you know, being a professional artist and, and making a living off of it. And your paintings are so colorful i'm just you know i i'm such a sucker for a good color it's i i love it and i love that your paintings are big they're they're you this is your preferred format like huge like 40 big i'm not quite sure when i have a small one i don't know what to do with my arms i've got i have my superpower is energy and i have a lot and that's why you were talking about your son earlier i have so much energy and I paint with force and power. I use uh, mops and brooms and big brushes and 
throwing my when I am in my studio, it's a workout. It is a full, you know, all body parts are going. I mean, I use my feet, my arms and with anything that I can find. It's a real um, free for all and just the energy. You can almost see it in this paint. Yeah, I was going to say it shows. It really shows all the movement and splashes. And yeah, it's just amazing. Which is funny because I just did a series um, that you can see on my um, my Instagram feed, which are really soft and subtle, which really brought back memories of my mother. My mother was very calm and quiet. So I was painting these this black and I kept going, God, my mom is here. And they're soft and sweet. And everybody's like, wow, where did that come from? I'm like... <sighs> I'm not sure, but I know my mother was tugging on me in there somewhere. So, uh, yeah, but I love the big ones for sure. That is so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, um, tell me a little bit about your art practice. So this is, I get it. That's a, that's a physical movement for you, but also, um, how do you come up with the color schemes, with the composition? What does it encompass for you? Or what do you want people who are looking at your art to feel or to think? Or, um... Um, I think with, I don't ever plan my colors. I never plan. They just, as they go down on the canvas, whatever, every action that I make, I know that I'm going to respond to it. Um, So I just kind of start with some colors that I'm thinking about out in nature. I take a lot of pictures of flowers and greens, the different colors of greens. And I always wonder if everybody sees the same colors out in the world that I do, because it's so bright and colorful that I'm always taking pictures and I'll bring those back. I also tap into a lot of storytelling. I'm one of 11 children and I have just funny, funny, funny stories of growing up. Um, you have so 10 siblings? That will, will be incorporated in it. Um, just funny things that I see. And as I paint, like I said, I react to the next thing. What is coming up? What the balance? How does the balance feel to me? It's a real shift of something doesn't feel right. And if I look at it long enough, I'll go, I can feel the movement moving me into that next, that next phase. But when people, what I want from people is when they look at it, they go deep into the painting that from far away, you get a a feeling of it. But when you get in close, there's all these movements and gestures. And I I write a lot. I write um, songs. I write sometimes what I'm feeling will just, uh, you know, sometimes I just go, I got to write this down and I'll just start scratching into my painting, whatever's on my mind. And I think that brings up, feelings for people that when they see my paintings they get that energy back so can you actually uh, i haven't seen any of your paintings up close yet i i will have to visit your gallery <laughs> um uh, uh, but can you like can you see the the scribbles on your paintings or do you paint yes over it? You, yes okay. when i you when i them? when i start my paintings I lay down a really thick layer of gesso and with their uh, nail starter sets or these really Uh sharp uh, metal things you get at Home Depot. And I scratch a pattern, just scribbles into the back. And then I let that dry. Those marks come up from the back all the way into the painting and you may not see them, but when you're there on the wall and the shadows and the light changes, then you can really see those carvings in the back of the painting. And that's where you start to get a second level. I did one for a gentleman um, in Palm Springs and he called me back. He goes, 
this painting changes every day. Every day that the sun hits it, I see something different. I said, exactly. And that's what I want. I want it to look different every time you see it. That's amazing. That's amazing. I I definitely yeah. I, I, I'll uh, I'll reach out and we'll see if you can give me a little studio tour because I'm really uh, you know you, you just also off off um, before we started recording. Uh, uh, Anne told me about the Studio Five, which is in Liberty Station in San Diego, which uh, she and four other women artists started during the pandemic, uh, and now uh, so it was kind of a virtual. Uh, group kind of artists getting together and, and doing stuff and now it's actually you know a place where you can go and uh, see the art and um so tell me a little bit more about this so I, I know that you're growing uh you have uh, more members now do you just accept members so how does this work and well we started the five of us um at the beginning of the pandemic we all ended up we had no galleries everything shut down yeah so the five of us were doing a marketing program online and we realized that we were all doing it together so we started asking each other we would call each other are you doing this what are you doing and then we thought can we just get on zoom and talk about this so then we all started talking about it and then we're like okay well let's meet next tuesday and so every Tuesday we would meet. We still meet every Tuesday at 10 o'clock since 2020. And after the pandemic, we were still meeting online. So I ended up running into a friend. She was getting a studio at Liberty Station. And so I went down and looked. I'm like, this is perfect. So I called the five and the five of us got together. I said, what do you think about this studio? And Everybody said yes. We moved in in June, um, a year and a half ago, and uh, we've been painting in there, creating. We do shows. We do marketing. We do websites together. We Any issue that we have, I can go to one of them and say, or all of them, or critiquing, what do you think about this? How do I fix this? What's going on? And we just powwow. It's just, it's amazing group of women. And then we decided we really, we got so much response from everybody else. All the other artists that were like, we want to join you. And so we're like, okay. So we had room for two more. So we brought in two more um, artists that um, are joining us. And now we're thinking, the space might not be big enough. We may need to increase the space. So that's kind of a hush hush right now, but we're kind of thinking how are we going to be a big community of artists that want to come together, learn business? Um, we have the structure and we're just so we're all teachers. I've been an art teacher um, before. Uh, Denise and Susie do a lot of teaching. So we kind of all, it's just evolved. It's just coming along. It, it's just meant to be. That's amazing. That sounds really amazing. And yeah. I, I love this idea of you uh, thinking of uh, other artists so you can expand and invite more people and share your knowledge and, uh, you know, the inviting and helping community. It's it's really awesome. I'm. Uh, yeah. uh, so you are still a teacher, right? I know that you you have been a volunteer teacher with San Diego uh, School District, right? Yes, and it's funny because when I was before I was an artist, I was in the fitness world, um, and my kids all went to school, and they had art teachers, and they taught me art, and I'm like, I'm kind of getting kind of good at this. Um, but I never thought I was going to be an artist. I just never had that in my plan um, until uh, 2009 when I had an accident. Um, I was hit by a drunk driver as a pedestrian. Um, and I was on my back for over a year. I twisted my spine and my pelvic so badly that um, I couldn't go back to the fitness world at the level mm -hmm. I was at lost a lot of my clients and went to um, a class, an art class to do healing more to paint because I had no art on my walls at home. And 
I just started painting and that's how I got into the art world. It found me and it's been amazing ever since. Yeah, isn't it isn't it amazing how how universe is telling you where you need to go even even sometimes if if it means that you're going to be hit by a drunk driver. <laughs> I know. I know, isn't it? You're on the wrong path. You need right. to get over here. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. I learned so much, though, from my accident, a, a whole different way of life, whole, you know, values of what it really means to be healthy and strong and being able to take care of yourself because I depended on a lot of people yeah. um, during that time. So yeah. um, how does this feel to you physically? Because you are, uh, your art is so physical and the process that you described is so physical. So does it still bother you? Do you still feel pain? Uh, does your spine bother you when you pee? <laughs> uh, every day. I, um, yes. And oh I God. I go to therapy, I go to PT, I get a massage every week, I go to chiropractor, I do all, I do preparation before I lay on the floor in the morning, I meditate to straighten my spine out before I go in, I do constant exercises to pull the hip around. The problem that I have is I twist the same way that I was twisted from my accident. So I'm constantly twisting the other way to balance out my body. So I do three or four therapies in a week. Wow. Just to stay um together. <laughs> But wow. I'm doing it and that's what's exciting to me is I am I think my fitness background prepared me for the recovery from my accident to be able to move forward. Um, that's a whole nother podcast in itself, but um, we, have, we have time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, yes, I do. I do struggle with it a little bit, but I know my limits and I know what I can do. And um, I do as much as I can, but I, I don't exercise the way I used to. I paint as my exercise now. Well, you look perfectly fit. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I do. I, I've always taken care of myself. Yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah, and it's. I'm so in awe, uh, you know, of of people who are so dedicated and so inspired by you know the idea of making art that they are taking extra care of themselves and uh you know like we all need we all know that we need to exercise we all know that we need to eat healthy we all know the benefits of meditation uh but it's the uh, I, in my experience that's the artist who's like yeah if i don't do this i can't paint or yeah. i can't create my art so i am doing this to be able to do that and yes it's just amazing how much art is is the motivator i have a friend actually here in san diego she she had a a, a car accident and it shattered uh her entire forearm uh, like the right arm from the from the wrist down all the way oh. to the elbow oh my uh, yeah yeah and i think like even the thumb a little bit so they practically put her hand together uh, and uh, and she's yeah she's drawing she's drawing with charcoal and pastels every single day she lives with pain but she figured out how to move her arm and her hands and her fingers the way that it actually works for her and she is she's still able to do uh to make art so yeah it is amazing I, i'm a cons i i think i've gotten myself into this pattern of what How do I stand? How do I hold my glutes? How do what part of my body doesn't work? You know, that needs a little bit more support today. And when I get to that point of you're pushing too hard and it is back off, go lay on the floor, meditate for 10 to 15 minutes, just lay on the floor. Because the minute I start to get to that point, I know I'm going to. If I go any further than that, I am going to be out for a week or two. So I really am aware of how much time and uh, when I need to take those breaks. 
Yeah. And I have good people that take care of me. <laughs> so that's important too. Get me back together, please. That's important too. Yeah. Hey, In the Arts and listeners, I just wanted to say a quick thank you for all the support you've given me in the past year. It means more than you know. Every donation through Buy Me a Coffee and every purchase of swag helps me keep up with the production and put out a new episode every week. And I certainly appreciate if you will keep doing it. But I also feel that if you like the show this much, you deserve a little more than just a thank you. This is why I launched a Patreon page. There will be monthly live Q&As, exclusive content, and for the hardcore fans, I got some swag and keepsakes. I love this community that we are building together. And by joining my Patreon, you will help me create more content for you. Go to patreon.com slash in the art scene and join today. So I wanted to ask you about Left Bank. So how did you first uh, get associated with Left Bank? And um, for everyone who doesn't remember uh, an episode with uh, Wendy called Klein, uh, she is licensing her work with Left Bank. And I left the information about it in the show notes in that episode. And I will leave more information in the show notes for this episode. Uh, but Anne has a little bit more of the insight view and I really want you to share with us. So how how, how did that relationship start at end? Um, I was, um, I do uh, Art Walk Little Italy mm-hmm. um, every year. And I was approached by one of their reps and she loved my work. And she said, you know, I'm doing this work with Left Bank Art, but you get approached a lot. So I spoke with her. I said, you know what? I don't know if that's something that I want to do. I was kind of new into the art world. And at the time, you know, you get so many people that come up and ask you different types of things. I said, I don't really know. Um, But let me get back with you. She kept coming back to me. I love your work. Please, let's talk. I just want you to come and talk to them. So um, I did. I said, "Okay, I'll go up. I'll meet with them. Let's talk about what it means to license your work and uh, be with a company like this. So I went up and I met um, the owner, Chris, and a couple of their team and loved him. I was so impressed. I was so impressed with their work, their work ethic, how much fun they have, all the people. I was like, I love this place. And um, as I was coming back, I ended up calling one of my interior design friends, um, Michelle, and said, do you ever work with Left Bank Art? And she said, oh, my gosh, I love those people. I love that company. They do the best work. And that's how I got started in it. Um, And from then, I've been working with them for about nine years now. Wow. And, yeah. So in a nutshell, can you describe what they actually do? Yes. So what Left Bank does, and I'll tell you a couple of things, because um, the way I do it is I have my studio split in half. I have Left Bank work on one side, and then I have commission and gallery work on another side of my studio. I produce for Left Bank. I do series for Left Bank, and I will send them up. Um, they live; they're up in Anaheim, and I drive my work up or I send it up to them, and then they bring it back. But what they do is they take my work, they take a copy of it, and market that to nationally to interior designers, to um, developers, architects, anybody. There is a whole nother market out there of these people, designers uh, and architects and whatnot, uh, catalog people, Z Gallery, all these different people that do print work. Um, It's a huge business. And what I do is 
with Left Bank, they have on their website, they have a page solely of my work. I have a website within their website where people can go and buy my prints from them. They will apply it to a G clay, to a canvas, to wood, glass, just about any substrate that you want. And they can take my painting and reproduce it, I believe, 25% to 30% bigger. I'm not 100% sure of those numbers, but I know that they can take them and increase them and decrease the size to order. Mm-hmm. So um, this, whatever I send to them, they can work with the, the designer to uh, for a perfect fit. That's awesome. So the the reason I'm asking is because on their website, there's not much public information. You have to be either an artist to sign up or have a login as a designer or so you have to be a member in some way. So or affiliate with their business. Yes. Uh, But I I do think that this is really important for artists to to know that this exists. And uh, it is actually there. There's an application form on their website. If you're an artist, you can submit your work and uh, be accepted. Uh, so, how do you know how they do the selection of the artists? How do they choose who they work um, with? Well, I always <laughs> the people that pr- approach me. I said, DM me, give me the inside scoop. Um, I because they take each artist and they really look at how does that artists present themselves what is it that we can use do we have clients that would match up with them there they have a lot of clients catalog people and sometimes they have every type of art Um, like you said with Wendy she does the most beautiful owls and Mm -hmm. they have people all over that do um you might do photography or animals. I'm um, abstract, um, colorful. Some of them are um, city scenes or uh, landscapes, you know. So they do all kinds of different art for all kinds of different people. Um, so it all depends on what they're looking for. But I think finding a body of work, something that's a little more um something different, something that stands out for them is what they're looking for. And you as a representative, uh, I, I, so, and correct me if I'm wrong. So they trust you uh, with your taste to select and bring in some artists to. Yes. Okay. So how do you yeah. do now, this? They have, I bring some people, they have denied them and said, no, this isn't it. This isn't, you know, that does happen. But I really, I feel like I know what they're looking for. So I can kind of help artists go on a few, even the ones I'm working with. I say, let's try this. How about looking at it like this or giving them some ideas on how to create um, a grouping of art that will go together? Because what they're looking for is if they have a hotel, they need art that would go in the lobby, art that would go into the restaurants, art that would go into the floor, each floor, and then the rooms the bathroom. So if you were to be picked up by, say, a developer that wanted your art for their hotel, they could buy for the entire hotel. That's amazing. And, that's, and that, that's, and that's, what, and that's a huge body of work, I can imagine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I just sent up on this last, last deadline nine pieces for them. And that was a variety. I sent a 70 by 70. Um, 240, 40 by 36, I think, four 14 by 14s, and then four uh, or three um, 24 by 18s. All kind of that would work together. Um, 
So that's what I'm looking for. I want somebody that it's going in the entryway. It's going in the restaurant. It's going in the bathroom. So that's how you need to think of it. How are they going to uh, market my pieces? And can they get picked up by some of these um, bigger developers or architects or whatnot? That sounds really interesting. So, um, you, um, so how do you work with with the artists? Can anyone approach you, let's say, on Instagram and say, "Hey, Anne, I I have a body of work, and I would like, um, like, for your opinion or a little bit of coaching because I'm thinking about licensing and I and I like the idea of working with Love Bank." Do you are, are you open for this kind of conversations or? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, I have a couple of people right now that have reached out to me. Um, we just had a big show in Las Vegas. And what they do is um, they have a market in Las Vegas, High Point, and Atlanta, and then a smaller one in New York. And they're in those showrooms twice a year. Uh, so they rotate. And so we have deadlines for each show. Yeah. So, yeah, I would love to be able to help somebody. Or, as you said, they can go online and um, apply through Left Bank that way. Yeah. And again, I'll leave all the information for you guys in the show notes. So if you're interested in uh, trying yourself or thinking about uh, licensing your work, uh, at least we know one company that is really trusted and regarded by artists. Uh, so you can try. Yeah. Yeah. All that would that. be great. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh my goodness. Uh, what else would I what was I going to ask you? Sometimes uh, sometimes things are just uh, slipping off my mind. Uh, <laughs> just... We have a small child at home. I can understand. Yeah, that. yeah. It, it happens when I start hearing him, you know, making noises and like, oh my god. Yeah. Well, I'll tell uh, you what, a, a, what do I need to focus on. <laughs> You want to hear a great story that just happened to me? I just got back from uh, Denver and my niece, my son lives in Vail. My niece just moved to Denver and I was there with my sister and her family and my family. And uh, we walked into my niece's new apartment building and there was one of my pieces hanging <gasps> in the entry, the first huge piece of mine hanging in the entryway and that okay. was from left bank art oh god yeah. that's amazing isn't that amazing it i know amazing. I was, my daughter goes isn't that your painting i'm like that is my painting yeah that that gave me goosebumps oh, that my was god. really so much fun yeah, yeah. It's, I I can't, I can't imagine you know seeing seeing your work out in the world um like this on random, like, oh, it's so exciting. Yeah. Oh, it's so wonderful. So exciting. And the people at Left Bank are just so, they do such an amazing job at marketing. Um, just, we just went, like I said, we just went to Las Vegas and I felt like the queen, like they are marketing, they're on it, they're interviewing us, they're on our, their stories, on our post. They get the word out about us, and I don't see galleries doing that as much for their artists. I mean, these guys just really promote and uh, are just so happy that you're there to support them. And I, I like that. They're my family. That's actually amazing. It's, it, and it's really it's really nice to hear that there are companies who are actually helping and promoting artists because yes, you're right. The galleries, when you're showing at the gallery, uh, in in many cases, you as an artist just need to promote your own show. Yeah. They do yes. some work, but not not that much. The, these guys are just and they're fun. They're fun. We have just an amazing time with them. Yeah, oh good God. energy. I'm always oh looking God. for good energy. If you can introduce me with someone so I can have them on a podcast, that would be so great. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, I remember what I was going to ask you. So you mentioned that uh, in your, and I'm sorry for, you know, switching back and forth. The, oh, uh, that's topics, okay. But you were, um, when you were talking about your um, Studio 5, 
Mm-hmm. And you said that you uh, uh, and the group of uh, artists that you were with, that you were talking about uh, business and marketing and uh, the websites. Uh, so beside of the studio work, you're also kind of you know getting together and and doing this kind of work. So I wanted to hear a little bit more because I think that uh, for many of my listeners, it will be also very interesting to hear. Uh, how do you go about uh, those things? Uh, what do you discuss in terms of marketing? Maybe you have some tips or uh, like valuable information or at least, you know, share a mindset because for a lot of artists, it's really difficult to combine, you know, this the business brain and the art brain. Uh, it's either one or the other. I would talk about that because, <laughs> because as you can tell, I don't mind talking And it is a lot of being able to talk about your art. I came before many years ago when I first moved to San Diego, I was in sales and you you have to talk, you have to talk on the phone. You don't have, you know, you, if you get a no, you just go, okay, it's a no, but it doesn't have to be a solid no. I can come back a different way at it. So I did learn that early on, but with this group, what we talk about is um, we started making sure what does our website look like? Is it presentable? Is it, you know, we read each other's uh, websites and went through them and gave pointers to each other on, you know, our bios and what we're doing uh how to put together a show online because it was during the pandemic and we were doing a uh, small works challenge suit uh, through Sergio uh, Sergio Gomez. Gomez. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And he's such a great guy too. I know. (laughs) know, I had had him on the show. Yeah. And um, we were just really, a lot of it was Instagram. How are we on Instagram? What are we doing? How often are we posting? What are we posting? How often in your story? What is your story versus what's going on in your post? Um, Some of us were stronger than others. So we would ask each other. um, I'm not the biggest whiz on the computer with my website, but I've got a lot of the, at least two of them are just whiz on the computer what's going on with their website. How often should a newsletter go out? How do we get followers for our newsletter? What type of things do you uh, say um, on your post? You know, different things like that we talk about. Shows that are online. We all are constantly working with each other. Matter of fact, we have a um, Google Sheets that we share with each other. And anytime a new show or a call to art comes out, it goes on to that page so we can all look at it. Matter of fact, I have right here today, three calls to art that I will be calling out and sending my art to. And those aren't all the ones that I've gotten. Those are just from the five of us talking about, hey, did you see that so-and-so is doing a show. Did you sign up for that? This is the deadline. Don't forget your deadline of this one. So we talk about those shows. Um, We're in the studio together. So for instance, I was trying to do gold leaf. I've never done gold leaf before. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I went in, I'm like, okay, I have blown it. I've ruined two or three of my paintings trying to do gold leaf. But I knew Denise had done some gold leaf. And so Denise sat down with me and we all looked at it and we all oohed and awed as she helped us figure out the gold leaf. How do, how do we put gold leaf down? We did find out that there are two different types of gold leaf. Some tear faster than others do. So those are the type of things that we bring together is, hey, has anybody tried this product and how does it work? So, yeah. Those are the kind of things that we talk about. That's that sounds really amazing. That sounds like a real, real good community. So uh, by the time this uh, this episode is out, and uh, this is going to be this is the first episode of season eight. Oh, okay. So uh, we are recording on actually International Women's Day. Today is March eighth. 
Oh, so, yeah. nice. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe we will be out, uh, uh, I think, the beginning of June with this episode. So by then, if you decide finally uh, that you are expanding and uh, calling for, you know, for members to join you, I will make sure to let people know about it wonderful show notes so yeah. you guys uh it's it's june uh jump on the show notes and check out if there is actually already open call for joining um studio five yeah uh if they want to come by we do um five art um studio and gallery is in liberty station in barracks 16 we're always there on Tuesdays, uh, usually Thursdays. They are there a lot more than I am. But um, every first Friday, we're there. If people want to come down and check it out, we would love to show them around. And we just have a lot of fun down there. So anybody that wants to stop in and say hello, uh, Five Art uh, Studio and Gallery. And, every uh, first Friday of the month. Every first Friday of the month. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, everybody take the note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come join us. We love it. The oh more, the merrier. Absolutely. Oh my God. And so thank you so much for your energy and thank you so much for, for taking the time to talk to me today. It's, it's amazing. Uh, oh, thank you. I just love talking about art. And, you know, I just love helping people, helping artists in uh, any way that I can. I can tell. And that's that's why we're here with this podcast as well, uh, sharing with you guys everything you want to know uh, and inspirational stories. And and I am so forever grateful for every single guest who came on my podcast and said, yes, if people have questions, please, yeah, they're welcome to reach out to me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to answer whatever I have. I can help. Uh, I just noticed that the art community uh, globally is more about you know, sharing and caring and supporting each other and, uh, you know, taking each other's hand and walking through the world because it's not easy for everyone. No, it's not. And, and, and it's funny because when I was in the fitness world and teaching, um, I taught at the gym all the time, the energy of it and that just supporting people that really wanted to feel good. And that's what I tried to take into my art and my paintings is how do I take that and let people know that I'm here to help and also that amazing energy that comes from just living life to the fullest and it's all comes through color for me. Well, and you and, were exuding it. Uh, <laughs> you oh, thank you. <laughs> thank thank you, you so much for your time. I'm so happy that we connected. And me and, too. Come down and visit us. Someday. I will absolutely first Friday of the month. I will. Yes. So, yeah. um, the, the I well, I'm, uh, I guess April, first. Yes, first April. Friday in April. Yes, I will be there. Yes. That's All right, amazing. that would be great. Thank you so much, Anne. And uh -huh. uh, everybody, you. go right now. Go go to the show notes and check everything about Anne, her art, and all the information that we were talking about. All the links and references are there. And yeah, we'll see you again on the art scene. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. It has been another episode of In the Art Scene podcast. If you liked today's conversation, please give us a good review on Apple. And go listen to other great stories. Check out our website intheartscene.com or follow us on Instagram at intheartscene for more content. If you are a creative and you want to share your story, shoot us a message from the website or DM us on Instagram. Look forward to seeing you next time in the art scene.